Over the course of the game's lifespan, there have been a lot of different additions that have buffed the progression to some extent. Just recently, Brawl Stars added Star Drops, a way to progress by winning eight matches a day while keeping some sort of gotcha in the game. This new feature, though, seems to have split the community, with some arguing it nerfed the progression while others disagree. But what is the truth? Are Star Drops fine as they are, or did they really nerf progression? To find this out, I've calculated the total rewards of two different player types. The casual player that plays the game for like 10 minutes a day, and the active player who's, well, active. But before we analyze both these player types, we need to assume some things. We are not counting how many tokens they get from refreshing event slots. We are not counting tokens from challenges, hitting a new rank on a brawler, special quests, and we are also not looking at the Power League nerf, since it's only Bling that has been nerfed, and Bling isn't really progression like gold, power points, and credits. We're also going to be assuming that a season has a duration of 70 days. All right, now let's get started. Since this is a casual player, we'll say that on average they earn about one to two wins a day, which equals to one star drop. We'll also assume that this casual player only finishes the brawl pass, meaning no extra rewards, and that they don't play any club games. So how many rewards did they get before the star drops update? Before the update, the free brawl pass would offer 12,240 coins, 3,550 power points, and 1,520 credits. Nowadays, you only get 1,120 credits instead of the 1,520 credits. All the other rewards were not nerfed, though. The Brawl Pass itself hasn't gotten any nerf either. So if you were to buy the pass and play till you unlock stage 70, in total, you would get 17,935 coins, 5,950 power points, and 1,840 credits. So from solely looking at the Brawl Pass, a casual player with our exact scenario of playing till tier 70 would only lose 400 credits in exchange for star drops. It's pretty obvious that someone who doesn't play the game that much will gain far more from star drops than a more active player. We've established that this casual player would gain one star drop each day, meaning that in a time span of 70 days they would obtain, well, 70 star drops. The chances of the different star drop rarities are as followed. Rare with a 50% chance, Super Rare with a 28% chance, Epic with a 15% chance, Mythic with a 5% chance, and lastly, Legendary with a 2% chance. So according to these chances, our casual player would be gaining 35 Rare Star Drops, 20 Super Rare Star Drops, 10 Epic Star Drops, 4 Mythic Star Drops, and 1 Legendary Star Drop. Now, according to the Brawl Stars Wiki, these are the different drop chances of all the rarities. To simplify, we'll always use the average of these rewards. As an example, rares would drop 25 power points, 60 coins, 125 token doublers, and so on. Now using the drop rates, this would mean that out of the 35 rare star drops, a casual player would gain 732 coins, 345 power points, 915 token doublers, and 24 credits. The 20 super rare drops would equal to 715 coins, 477 power points, 2,634 token doublers, and 55 credits. The 10 epics would give you 872 coins, 304 power points, and 2,180 token doublers. Mythics are 520 coins and 270 power points. The last star drop, the legendary one, would most likely drop a star power. So to sum it up, from all the star drops, this casual player would receive 2,839 coins. 1,396 power points, 5,729 token doublers, and 79 credits. This all for losing 400 credits. But it's pretty understandable that our casual player received a huge buff in progression. They don't play any club league and don't play beyond tier 70. But what if we were to take an active player who tries to play the game to its fullest? We'll assume that the active player receives all three star drops per day, is in a club with a Diamond 3 rank that always places first, but somehow stays at Diamond 3 and gains all tokens available through quests and playing daily. During a span of 70 days, one can accumulate 14,000 tokens through exhausting the token limit of 200 each day. You also have two daily quests with a value of 200 tokens each. 
meaning you can get 28,000 tokens thanks to the daily quests. Aside from the daily quests, there are also the season quests, which on average give about 2,250 tokens per week, so 22,500 tokens in one season. There's also the weekend events that give a total of 5,000 tokens, and of course the Brawl Pass exclusive quests, which altogether are also worth 5,000 tokens. All of this would mean that our active players would gain an enormous amount of 69,500 tokens without the Brawl Pass exclusive quests. We'll get back to them later. Now we just subtract the amount of tokens needed to fill the entire pass till tier 70, which is 34,500 tokens. So we get the number of tokens that go into the extra rewards, which would be 35,000 tokens or 70 times the bonus rewards. Now we already know how much we get by completing the free Brawl Pass thanks to our prior calculations. 12,240 coins, 3,550 power points, and 1,520 credits before the update, or 1,120 credits after the update. Now before the update, the bonus rewards at the end of the track would give you additional 10,150 coins, 2,940 power points, and 1,750 credits. Nowadays, these bonus rewards are only 3,500 coins, 1,400 power points, and 350 credits. If we include the paid side of the Brawl Pass, then you'd get 17,935 coins, 5,950 power points, 2,240 credits before the update, and 1,840 credits after the update. The quests only exclusive to the Brawl Pass would give you additional 1,450 coins, 420 power points, and 250 credits before the update, and 500 coins, 200 power points, and 50 credits after the update. So how many coins, power points, and credits do we get from the Brawl Pass before and after the update? Before the update, the free Brawl Pass would give you a total of 22,390 coins, 6,490 power points, and 3,270 credits, while the entire Brawl Pass contained a total of 29,535 coins, 9,310 power points, and 4,240 credits. Compared to today, the free Brawl Pass only has 15,740 coins, 4,950 power points, and 1,470 credits while the entire Brawl Pass contains 21,935 coins, 7,600 power points, and 2,240 credits. This means that the free Brawl Pass received a 29.7% nerf to coins, a 23.7% nerf to power points, and a huge nerf of 55% to credits. The entire Brawl Pass, however, wasn't nerfed as much as the free Brawl Pass. A 25.7% nerf to coins, a 18.9% nerf to power points, and a 47.2% nerf to credits. But this isn't everything that has been nerfed. There's still a club games that were nerfed as well. Let's look at club games. We assumed that our active player remains in Diamond 3 and constantly places first in both club league and club quests without advancing any leagues. Before the update, our player would gain 1,324 club coins in a matter of two weeks, which would mean that in a season that is 10 weeks long, they would be gaining 6,620 club coins. This is enough to buy approximately 11,033 power points. After the update, all club coins were cut in half, which means that instead of getting 6,620 club coins in a season, our active player instead obtains 3,310 club coins, which are roughly enough for 5,517 power points. A huge hit for progression, and that's only in Diamond 3. So how much progression did we lose all in all, and can star drops compensate for that? If our active player did not buy the Brawl Pass, then they'd lose 6,650 coins, 7,057 power points, and 1,800 credits. If they did buy it, then they lose 7,600 coins, 7,277 power points, and 2,000 credits. Okay, now that we know how much star drops have to compensate for, let's see if they really did buff progression. We'll assume that the active player wins at least 8 matches a day in a span of 10 weeks, which are 3 star drops per day for 70 days. So in total, we'd have 210 star drops. With the chances from earlier, we know that 50% of all star drops are rare. So 105 rares, 28% are super rares, 59 super rares, 
15% epic, which are 32 star drops, 5% mythic equal 11 star drops, and the remaining 3 star drops are all legendary. Now from the 105 rare star drops using these drop rates from earlier, we'd get 2,197 coins, 1,038 power points, 2,747 token doublers, and 59 credits. The 59 super rare star drops drop 2,110 coins, 1,407 power points, 7,770 token doublers, and 86 credits. The 32 epic star drops give out 2,791 coins, 973 power points, and 6,977 token doublers. The mythic star drops drop around 1,059 coins and 741 power points. And now at last, the three legendary drops should most likely provide two random gadgets and one random star power. So how much do we gain in total from all star drops? And does it compensate for all the nerfs? After converting all token doublers, which is a staggering amount of 17,494 token doublers, to bonus rewards, all star drops grant a total of 9,907 coins, 4,859 power points, 320 credits, one star power and two gadgets. This means that if our active player did not buy the Brawl Pass, they'd gain a buff of 3,257 coins, a nerf of 2,198 power points, a nerf of 1,380 credits, a random star power and two random gadgets. If they did, however, buy the Brawl Pass, it's still a buff to coins, but still a nerf to both power points and credits. Now this nerf to power points would be even more severe if we had assumed that our active player is in a club with a master's rank and consistently places first. If that had been the case, then the power points nerf wouldn't have been only 2,198 or 2,332, but whopping 4,139 or 4,273 power points. In my honest opinion, star drops are definitely a great addition. But I think their execution wasn't that good. Playing to get 8 wins on one day to me seems a bit too much, especially if you get way too many rares in a row. It's definitely a huge buff to very casual players, which is most likely the big silent majority of the game. But this came at a cost for the very few who are already maxed out, or are playing this game out of passion. Not only are you now no longer able to buy as many power points as you used to, but you also can't store as many credits for new brawlers. Altogether, I do think star drops need a slight rework, but as a concept, they're pretty all right. What do you guys think? Write it down in the comments. I'll make sure to read them. And with that, see ya.